Welcome back. I have heard you say that it is not money that motivates you. You're just 40 years old. Yeah. So what is it that gets you up in the morning, that gets your adrenaline pumping and makes you want to come to work? Problem solving. I love solving problems. I love thinking about new ideas. How can we create more value to our customers? In this space that we're in, it's never ending problems, it's never ending destinations. We're just starting with, we're not even scratch the surface of the potential of the problem, of the solutions that we can provide and the value we can create over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And that's how I think. I think about, okay, how do we create some money? will always come up. It's all about creating value for me and, and, and having joy of creating a company where people, young people would love to work and will grow um, from, from a young, uh, entering into the job market to become executives or managers or leaders in, in, within the company and spread across Africa and the world. And that's what really drives me every day, is, is, is creating that environment. I work with my, my, my team, my, my partners, my, my, my colleagues, to be able to create that kind of uh, platform. And money will always come. I've never focused on the money. Obviously, you have to make money to be able to run a business like this and to continue to grow. But I'm more interested in the value that we create and the solution that we provide for the customers. Uh, you hinted a while ago about a business that went bust, that, 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 that went bad. You lost about a million dollars in a business venture before setting up uh, Wakanout.com with your partner. Uh, tell me about that and how you recovered and, and moved on to bigger and better things. Well, that's why I say you have to make mistakes when you're young. Um, for me, it was having the wrong partnership. The, the bottom line worldwide that business feels I had the wrong partner. There's no other thing about that. Today I have the right partner, he, has, he, has, he gets it, he has the same determination. Ralph Tamano has the same determination like I do. He has, he sees the same, he clearly sees the same vision. And so we work very well together. Everything is about teamwork. And then we have other people that have come, in, come on board and joined us, they have the same, the same mindset. So it's about putting together a team. It's, it goes back to what I talk about in sports. You know, if you have the wrong teammates, if you have the wrong coaches, if you have the wrong organization, you're gonna lose. So that's the bottom line. And that's what happened in business for me. I had the wrong team, and that, that's, why we, that's why it didn't work. You know, partnerships are sometimes inevitable. Yeah. But statistics show that about 62% of all startup, uh, startups fail due to co-founder conflict mm. or, you know, uh, the kind of things that you talked about. What are the things that you find that could cause a friction or a failure in business? Uh, and how are you and your partners guarding against that? You see, I go. I say these are the things that I learned in sports. If it becomes a me thing, then it, can, it causes real, real problems. When I talk about what can I talk about we? So I'm not the only person here creating value. Um, obviously, I have a, role, a huge role to play because of my position and the fact that we. I was I want the person that came up with the idea, but my partner also had the same vision. He has the same mindset. He has the same determination, and. We have always, from the beginning, told each other, I told them, listen, this is something that could be so big, it's going to really outlive us. So you, we have to take it to the fact that we are creating something that's going to outlive us. We're only human, we're only mortal, nobody knows how long it's going to be on this planet. So with the likes of ExxonMobil, Chevron, all these big companies today, we're created by human beings. And so I told them, all, or we talked about all the time, that we always do the best we can in creating the value. When it comes to money and monetary things, that will always come. And we put the company in a structure where eventually, if it's about monetizing it yourself or getting the value of what you've created, there will, be, there, will, there will always be opportunity to do that in the future. But the bottom line is that let have the vision that this company is going to be bigger than both of us and it's going to outlive us. Your father uh, was a petroleum engineer and founder of one of Nigeria's biggest drilling companies. He must have wanted you to follow in his, in his footsteps. Did he? And how did you, you know, wriggle out of that? Well, of course, um, he, he obviously, I wanted to follow in his footsteps too, but as you grow up, you, you realize that you have all the talents and all the blessings that God has given you. And uh, one of them was going to basketball. So once I got into basketball, it exposed me to a whole different world, a uh, whole different opportunities. Uh, as a young, as a professional athlete, it gave me some, some decent living and more than what any young man would expect at that age. Um, to be able to earn the kind of money that I earned at a young age. So he exposed me to a lot, gave me different ideas. And uh, so that enabled me to, you know, tell him that I didn't want to diversify. I want to also create an opportunity in another sector. Because for us as a company, uh, as a family, I felt like my dad is very strong, was very strong to do what he did. He came from very humble beginnings and was able to build a company like that. 
I feel like the, 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 the childhood that I had, which was a very blessed childhood, I never wanted anything in my life. My father always provided for us and my mother. So I feel like I had the, I had the obligation to chart, chart a new course for the family and to go in a different direction and, um, because I had that, that backing behind me. So it wasn't a big, a big issue. And today we see that oil prices at $40 a barrel, so it was a good decision. <laughs> Apparently. If you had to give a startup entrepreneur one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, identify the problem, test it, or the solution that you're providing for that problem. Have people um, have their input into your solution to make sure that it, it, it works. Um, work with focus groups to, to ensure that you, you make the necessary adjustments to create that product to be at a level where it's ex it would be acceptable and create a value that you're looking for for the customers. And then you, 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 you'll be persistent. I mean, you persevere. And, then I, and you cannot underestimate the, the, the sacrifice you have to make. Uh, I tell people all the time, when, we start, when I started this company, we didn't earn a salary for two years. My partner, I told him, listen, we're going to pay our staff. We're not going to make much money, but we're going to keep on building. And eventually, we'll get a reward for the work that we've done. Uh, so I tell uh, people all the time, block out the noise. Focus on exactly what you need to do. And if it takes you two years, it takes you three years, it's not much time. I had a six-year plan. I was not going to make any money. I was ready not to make money for six years. So my mindset was already programmed. So I wasn't worried about what anybody was saying, what the other, anything was talking about. I just focused on the job at hand. And that's what I tell people. There's no easy f money. There's no quick fix. You have to go through the process. You have to make, find solutions as you go along. You're going to have challenges. But you have to be, you have to be battle tested. You have to find solutions at every point of the way and never give up and keep pushing and be able to make necessary adjustments to continue to sustain the business and make sure it stays afloat until you're able to have a breaking point. And so that's, that's what I tell them all the time. Is there's no quick money. And I think most people in Nigeria have gotten this mindset that it's easy money. There's no easy money in this world. You have to work for it. And even in the Bible, that's what God said. Obina Ikeze, we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And we thank you for watching. Please tweet me your thoughts at Modeli SY. Let me know what you think of my conversation with Obina Ikeze, CEO of Wakanao.com. Thank you again for watching and see you again next time.